Hello, welcome to part 4 of this series. Now let's move to question number 61. Which of the following is useful test in measuring exertion during physical activity? Option A. Wong Bach scale. Option B. Box scale. Option C. Rancho Los Amigos scale. Option D. Disability rating scale. And the answer is Option B. Box scale. Now let's move to question number 62. Which of the following phases of cardiac rehabilitation is considered a stretched outpatient program? Option A. Phase 1. Option B. Phase 2. Option C. Phase 3. Option D. Phase 4. And the answer is Option B. Phase 2. Now let's move to question number 63. Which of the following is the simplest technique to clear secretions from the upper airway in pulmonary rehabilitation program? Option A. Percussion. Option B. Vibration. Option C. Shaking. Option D. Cuff. And the answer is Option D. Cuff. Now let's move to question number 64. A patient is positioned for bronchial drainage from anterior segment of the upper lobe. The most appropriate position for the patient is Option A. Supine with pillow under the knees. Option B. Supine with foot of the bed elevated 16 inch. Option C. Supine with head of the bed elevated 12 inch. Option D. Prone with head of the bed elevated 12 inch. And the answer is Option C. Supine with head of the bed elevated 12 inches. Now let's move to question number 65. The coronary arteries mostly perfuse the myocardium during which cardiac phase? Option A. Systolic. Option B. Diastolic. Option C. Mid-systole. Option D. End of systole. And the answer is Option B. Diastole. Now let's move to question number 66. While examining a patient with cerebellar degeneration, which of the following is not typically associated with this condition? Option A. Ethiosis. Option B. Dysmetria. Option C. Nystagmus. Option D. Dysdiodo. No coronacea. And the answer is Option A. Ethiosis. Now let's move to question number 67. A 50 year old female patient complains of occasional difficulty in maintaining her balance. While walking and frequent episodes of vertigo, the most likely cause of patient's difficulty is a disorder of Option A. Visual system Option B. Propriocity system Option C. Auditory system Option D. Vestibular system And the answer is Option D. Vestibular system Now let's move to question number 68. The medical record of a patient shows a lesion affecting the facial motor nucleus. Based on the patient's diagnosis, the most probable clinical presentation is Option A. Facial muscle weakness ipsilateral to the lesion Option B. Facial muscle weakness contralateral to the lesion Option C. Imbibed facial sensation ipsilateral to the lesion Option D. Imbibed facial sensation contralateral to the lesion And the answer is Option A. Facial muscle weakness ipsilateral to the lesion. Now let's move to question number 69. The examiner assess a patient's lower extremity deep tendon reflexes. Using a reflex hammer, which of the following reflexes would provide examiner with most information on L3 L4 neurological level? Option A. Metallar reflex. Option A. Lateral hamstring reflex. Option C. Posterior tibial reflex. Option D. Achilles reflex. And answer is Option A. Petalar reflex. Now let's move to question number 70. The treatment plan for a patient with hemiplegia includes reinforcing the normal movements with key points of control and avoiding all with the reflex movement patterns and associated reactions. This approach clearly resembles Option A. Bobhats. Option B. Corbett. Option D. Tendenberg. Option D. Brostorm. And answer is Option A. Bobhats. Now let's move to question number 71. 11 month old baby with cerebral palsy attempt to maintain a court report position. Which reflex would interface with this activity if it was not integrated? 
ऑप्शन डी गैलेंस रिफ्लेक्स ऑप्शन बी सिमेट्रिक टॉनिक नेक रिफ्लेक्स ऑप्शन सी प्लैंडर ग्रास्प ऑप्शन डी पॉजिटिव सपोर्ट रिफ्लेक्स एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी सिमेट्रिक टॉनिक नेक रिफ्लेक्स नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 72 Which of the following rehabilitation treatment option is commonly used for phantom limb pain? Option A, tens. Option B, sensory discrimination training. Option C, mirror therapy. Option D, all of the above. And the answer is option D, all of the above. Now let's move to question number seventy-three. Spinal cord injury is classified by using which of the following scale? Option A, Blosco Coma Scale. Option B, Battle Index. Option C, Asia. Option D, Ashworth Scale. And answer is Option C, Asia Scale. That's American Spinal Cord Injury Association Scale. Now let's move to question number seventy-four. A four-year-old boy is brought to hospital because his mother had noticed that he has difficulty in getting up from a squatting position or seated position on the floor while playing with his toys. On physical examination, there is an increase in calf circumference bilaterally. You think that the child has muscular dystrophy. The maneuver the child performed to assist him in standing is caused by Option A proximal lower limb weakness option B distal lower limb weakness option C proximal upper limb weakness option D distal upper limb weakness and the answer is option A proximal lower limb weakness Now let's move to question number 75 Neuroplasticity is a concept that refers to all of the following except option A the potential ability of central nervous system to modify its structural and functional organization option b partial recovery is possible long after sustaining a brain injury option c the brain remains capable of changing in response to experience and injury option d insult or injury to central nervous system is permanent and functional ability cannot be altered with any type of interventions and the answer is Option D insult or injury to central nervous system is permanent and functional ability cannot be altered with any type of interventions Now let's go to question number 76 What is the most common location of hypertrophic ossification in spinal cord injury patients Option A hip option B knee option C shoulder option D elbow and the answer is Option A hip Now let's move to question number 77 A 17 year old student is stabbed in the back and present as following loss of sensation paralysis and loss of vibration below T5 of the left loss of pair and temperature below T5 on the right what syndrome does she have Option A central cord syndrome option B brown cord syndrome option C anterior cord option D cord equine And the answer is Brown Scott syndrome. Now let's move to question number seventy-eight. Polymyelitis and Waddings Hoffman's disease affect which portion of the spinal cord? Option A: fasciculus cutis plus ventral horn. Option B: fasciculus gracilis and dorsal horn. Option C: dorsal horn only. Option D: ventral horn only. And the answer is. Option D pendle horn only Now let's move to question number 79 The examination of patient who sustained a hyperextension injury of cervical spine reveals loss of proprioception and two point discrimination with intact motor function This type of incomplete spinal cord injury is most appropriately termed Option A anterior cord syndrome option B brown cord syndrome option C central cord syndrome option D posterior cord syndrome and the answer is option D posterior cord syndrome Now let's move to question number 80 in post stroke patient with the flaccid left side in order to facilitate muscular activity the treatment plan should include 
option a fade bearing tapping and elevation option b vibration tapping and long stretch option c fade bearing tapping and approximation option d approximation elevation and prolonged stretch and the answer is option b vibration tapping and prolonged stretch so that's all for today in part 4 if you need further clarification for any of the above questions do comment below in the comment box i'll be back with part 5 of this series See you then. Bye-bye.